to It's a Lovely Day with lovely waters. It is a new day, but in spite of the evils of this present world, God is faithful. You know, David said in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mind. May God bless each of you in Jesus' name. And you guys, come on. Spend a little time with me in the Word of God, where we will see examples of God's love, see examples of His peace, see examples of His goodness, see examples of God's faithfulness. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May God bless you again in Jesus' name. Come on. Hello everyone, this is Lovely Waters. This is the first of many talk shows to come. It's entitled, The COVID-19 Pandemic and Our Youth. This also is our new talk show entitled, The Alabaster Box with Lovely Waters. We have a great show set up today with a young lady by the name of Hillary. She's 16 going on 17 within just a few days from now. Welcome, Hillary. Thank you for being our guest today. Of now, course. we'd like to begin. Excuse me? Oh, I said, of course. Yes, yes. We're so happy you're here. Now, what we would like to do is ask you a few questions, uh, and we'd like to uh, just kind of just briefly go over a few, uh, a little bit of history. Now, we know that um, we have been inundated with the words COVID-19 pandemic, right? All right. But nevertheless, we want to uh, also uh, share that, you know, some history about it. The origin of uh, this pandemic was said to have begun in Wuhan, China, and it was in December 2019. However, China only reported this uh, horrific uh, pandemic uh, in 2020. Uh, they only went public. They went public in 2020, uh, January the 12th. And they referred to it as a novel coronavirus. Uh, it was said to have been severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2. It is reported that uh, 61 million people even died to date in 2023. So COVID is still alive and well. The total came to around 109 billion overall. So we uh, again um, want to ask you, Hillary, as a young person, a as a member of our youth population, how did it affect you? Um, it affected me socially to a certain degree. Um, and also in terms of my personality too, I'd like to say, because I feel like without COVID, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel so like distant from certain people or sometimes socially awkward. Wow. Because during those times, things were very awkward because you I believe it. Distance, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Least little thing if somebody coughs or sneezes, you look at them a certain way, and then you're just acting awkward at that point. And so, right. I, like, it has had a great change. Yeah, it was almost as if when someone in public coughed, it was like they saw your cough as a threat to them, you know. Yeah. And that it was like a weapon, you know, um, that they had to protect themselves from. Uh, and so, therefore, it was, it really did change our perspectives socially as to how we communicated with one another. I, another one another, I agree. Now, um, 
I want to say that, you know, when I thought back, there was no one that was alive then or now that can't say that that wasn't a devastating experience. Um, uh, did you have family members contracted? I did. My mother and my grandmother. And also okay. uh, Uncle Ozzy. Your uncle. Okay. So were they hospitalized or were they just at home bedridden? Um, my uncle, he was uh, bedridden. And my grandmother was both. She was hospitalized for two days and bedridden for the time remaining. And my mother was in the ICU for wow. um, for how long? For I'd say two weeks, and then she was put in the regular emergency room for four months. Wow, I know that was hard for you, dear. I know that was hard for you. And then not only that, but you didn't have the ability to visit. Yeah, on top okay. of that. And how did you feel about that? It made me feel lost to a certain degree. And I couldn't, like, connect with her on the web, on the level that I wanted to, that I knew that she needed. Because, you know, a phone can only do so much connecting. Right. And right. I just, I didn't feel entirely like I was in my entire 100 but that's all I could give. Okay. And that was true with everybody else, too. Um, also, I want to move on. And also, I wanted to say that, uh, ask you the next question, were you fearful? I was. Okay. I and what, what, why? I, I know that sounds like a really ridiculous question, but could you expound on why you felt so fearful? I was fearful because I didn't want to catch COVID myself and give it to my other family members. I was fearful because my mother was in the ICU because of COVID. And I know mm -hmm. that every day you watch the news, you go on social media, anything on your phone or even go out, it's all COVID related. And right. it would show the toll of how many people were dying. And okay. it scared me because I was like, oh, wow, is this like the end times? Like, like is this it? Right, yeah. A lot of I, people, I imagine, felt that way. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So I, those were the main things I was definitely worried about. Did you ever think to the extent that this uh, pandemic would just wipe out uh, the total population of the world? I know that's kind of, you know, extreme, but did that ever occur? To everyone in the whole entire world had COVID. Yes, I thought that. It seemed like it anyway. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Okay. Now, what was the social climate in school? Although you said that you was homeschooled or you were uh, working from home during that time uh, for, for such a time, but then you eventually did go to school every day. And what was that like in terms of social dis, dis excuse me, social distancing and also masking um before we went back to school being on school online it was hard because it was hard for us to focus knowing what was going on around right. us um now when we went back you know, we couldn't social distance in the hallways because we had to transition to different classes. But in class, mm -hmm. we sit like across from each other or at different tables, and it wasn't so crowded. The classes right. were as we were. They weren't, the classes weren't as big, you say? No, they weren't. Okay. But um, now, what kind of concerns did uh, you have? Uh, when it came to, uh, did you have any friends that contracted it? 
I did. I have yes. Wow, that's really something. I did do a little research, and one of the things was that I found out, and that is that the data showed that uh, when it comes to youth between the ages of 10 and 19, it was less likely for them to, to contract COVID-19. Maybe it was their, you know, immune system. I do know that immune systems, you know, uh, weaken as we get older uh, and you get into the uh, older population, adult population. Nevertheless, um, I also wanted to say that did the crisis um, um, of this deadly virus draw you and your family closer to God? You know, since we are, we are about uh, here at the at the Alabaster Box, we 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 deal with the issues we deal with as Christian people, and we look at it from a spiritual perspective, and try to be a witness or try to be uh, uh have testimony of God working in our lives on a daily basis in a more practical way. So. Did it bring your family closer together? Did it bring your family closer to God? And how so? It did most definitely bring my family uh, closer to God, even us individually closer to him, because every night, excuse me, every night we would pray and we would read our confessions or declarations with each other on the phone, even with my mother. And oh wow, with your mother in the hospital or just yes, in the hospital. Oh wow, okay. So you guys called her and prayed over the phone with her. Yes. That was a blessing. I bet that really comforted her as well as you guys. And that Especially was different. go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And that was also a different level of connection as well for us because we couldn't be there in person. Right, right. That's what I that's what I was thinking too. So uh so what you're saying is that as a Christian family, it brought you and your family closer uh uh to yourself to 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 one another as well as your relationship with God was was strengthened. So therefore, um, would you say that, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but faith, we know, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. And many times in life, we come to different roads in life where the only way that we know that we're going to make it through it is by faith. So, uh, so what are you? So, how was your faith affected? It was tried most definitely because I think after my family members contracted COVID nineteen, I was like, like I was at the point where I was questioning God. I was like, why? Why did you? let her get COVID? Why did you let her get put in the ICU? Like, why did you do all this? Why did you even let COVID become COVID? You okay. know? But overall, I still had to put that aside and put the whole situation in his hands and let him do it at his own pace. Because unfortunately, but fortunately, he does everything in his own timing not yeah. when we but when he gets it done and not to mention the people that live you guys you know that that you got your family praise god god saved you guys you guys didn't lose anyone so that is right there is a moment of of worship and praise that you that you can you you experience and that you can uh have jubilation because God, he honored the prayers you guys were having. So that's really a, a great testimony of faith and also God's faithfulness during this, uh, this terrible crisis. Uh, and it's still alive today, too. So I don't want to act as if it was gone. It's gone and that we are COVID-free. 
what economic crisis did it create for your family? Or did it uh, create an economic uh, crisis? Um, <clears throat> well, it did cause um, a problem when my mother got COVID. She lost her job. Because... She lost her job? Yeah. Why did they tell her that she was fired? Um, they had no reason. Well, was she, oh, I, I assume that it was due to all of the lost days, the days that she wasn't able to come in to work. Um, no, she had, uh, PTO. She had, um, days off that she could take. She even communicated with her job that she was in the ICU. She had her doctor sign, send in a form where she was at confirming that she was there. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Well, you know what? I believe that probably a lot of that happened because back then it was so novel. It was novel. It was something new that no one had heard of. And they didn't know if she was, you know, how long that it lasted. They didn't know. Probably were thinking that I don't want her to bring it back here. You know, we don't we don't know anything about this virus. Uh, you could still be carrying it. You know, I, I'm just assuming these things. So you know, but that still was very very unjust. Okay, so uh, therefore she lost the job. How did you guys survive? Not having I income. Well, at the time, we, uh, COVID-19 uh, in the in Washington state came out with a law that they couldn't evict people. Right. Okay. That was in most states. Uh-huh. Yes. So okay. just, we didn't, we pay what we could. Um, right. I see. And that's how we made it. Amen. And you made it by faith. Amen. Amen. We have those times in life where we have to walk by faith and not by sight. And when we do that, God is pleased and he honors faith and faith honors God. Okay. What we're going to finish up here. We're going to uh, go on and we're going to um, do our conclusion here. Um, what was social distancing? Um, well, in the in in the um, what did you think about social distancing? I guess I asked you as a young person. What do you think about that? Do you think that they can to people not getting COVID, or do you think that it was just a what can I a um, um, a, a protocol that you know they created just to you know, try to, you know, uh, what can I say, prevent the, um, the, the spread of COVID? Or do you think it really helped I at your school? Uh-huh. In public. Uh, okay. Work like that because, you know, kids are going to be kids. They're always going to be in each other's face. So you don't think it worked at school? No. Mm -hmm. Because people kept on violating the social distance, uh, which was what, six feet? Six feet. Right. Okay. I see. Um, excuse me again, you said? Oh, I was just saying, personally for me, I love my distance, so that didn't bother me. Oh, it didn't bother you, the social distancing? Okay, but you think that most of the kids uh, had a problem with it? Yes. <laughs> okay. I guess especially the boys, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And um, I want to also say that um, I really did, uh, I really do appreciate you being here today. And I want to say that, you know, we really did, um, uh, we really did um, do a lot of research when we came to this topic. We're not done. 
Uh, this is only a test today. Uh, we have other youth that are standing in line. And the next time that we do our program, we're going to have at least four other youth on the program all together. Uh, I want to hear their perspectives. Uh, and, and like I said, who knows? Next year, this summer, we, we, we could have a, a, a pandemic again. You know, uh, COVID could break out with a vengeance. Uh, we did have, um, I, from my understanding, a Ghanaian doctor that uh, up with this uh, COVID-19, uh, uh, what can I say, um, you know, inoculation. And therefore, uh, it did prevent the, the um, what can I say, spread. And it did protect people from uh, upcoming uh, breakouts of COVID. And they're still asking people to be diligent in terms of getting their uh, COVID-19 shots. I, I, I really uh, want to say again that I want, uh, I really would like to encourage people to, uh, uh, to continue to protect themselves from COVID-19. Uh, I think that I was really surprised when they t said that, um, I think it said that 61 a billion, million people died just last year. Amen. And um, I was just really uh, uh, set back with that because I think that what it did for me, it was a wake-up call that, um, that COVID-19 is still alive and well. grown man excuse me we had some problems with our our reception here i knew that we would have a little bit of problems with our um our technology but nevertheless we're we're going to be soldiers i mean we're going to overcome our little tech problems and we're going to keep going on because we have a great topic here our youth and the COVID 19 pandemic uh, I also want to say that um, uh, in our next program, uh, we're going to uh, look a little closer at some of the other uh, issues that were facing uh, our nation and our, uh, our, our uh, youth during the pandemic. Um, I um, really am very grateful that you came to spend some time with us today, Hillary. Is there anything else you'd like to add to your experience uh, that is really heartfelt in terms of uh, looking into the future about a uh, pandemic? Do you believe that the pandemic is something that was created by man, man-made, or was it something, a pandemic uh, or a, 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 a virus that was just naturally occurring this was most definitely handmade this you was, think so yes why do you think that um based off of my research i've done down through the years of covid and i could tell a difference in the climate because I would see, you know, those planes that fly in the air and it's dropping something in the air. Those back then flew around a lot. Compared They're called to chemtrails. Pardon? They're called chemtrails. Chemtrails. Mm -hmm. Well, you saw those more back then than you do now. Right. That's true. That's true. I know I haven't seen one in quite a, some time. Exactly. And they could try to say, oh, we were trying to clean the air. No. That's not my theory. I think that they're putting it in the air. That's what they want us to wear masks. And then they try to try to 
act like it was coming from that one individual by having a social distance. Yeah, oh. but it was really in the air. That's what they wanted us to stay in the house. Okay, well, we're ending up right now and we're coming into our conclusion that um, COVID-19 and our youth is a very, very important subject. It's important for us to know how they felt about it. It caused a lot of emotional uh, types of responses. And we really, you know, it's so important to us for it should be as parents to guide our children through major crises like that. But in this, at, in the meantime, we want to thank you, Hillary, for coming with us. We want to say goodbye to you who came to spend time with us. And uh, we've got a great show coming up where we're going to have at least uh, three additional guests at, uh, of, with our youth. Pan the pandemic and our youth. God bless you guys today. And we hope that you guys will return. And we're hoping that I will really have our tech uh, problems worked out. <laughs> because, you know, uh, sometimes it's like that. We have problems with our uh, technology. But we're working on it. And we're going to get it down until it is perfect. Nevertheless, we thank God and we thank you. And we want to encourage you to come back to the Alabaster Box. And I also, uh, next week, I will be sharing more about what is, uh, we're coming out of the box, okay? So you guys come and spend some time with us at the Alabaster Box with Lovely Waters. May God bless you.